it is quite interesting when you step away from doing something for a while that you supposedly would just step back into it and suspect that you know exactly what it is that goes on. Not that I don't have experience with sitting in front of a microphone and talking or discussing the subjects that I normally do, just that there's a strange, I would say, disconnect between what used to be so commonplace and what now feels so, so distant. But in that, and in the consideration of coming back to doing videos, I wondered quite often what it is that I would even talk about. I think, in a way, we all kind of hope that we'll go away and then step back in and come with some grand shareable revelation, something of immense value that's just beneficial to everyone to validate the time that may or may not seem lost. But ultimately, that is often not how it works. While it is true that plenty has been learned and a lot has been done or gained or understood, that does not mean that it condenses itself to a short 30 second spiel or even a 10 minute elaborate discussion on a particular subject matter that's supposed to relieve us of our interest. I do know though that many of us are in fluctuation. A great deal of us who spent many hours and heck even years in esotericism and online occultism if not just through text but only through social circles have faded into obscurity. Many of us have gone on to do other things, to live our lives, as it should be, ultimately. But that is the nature of the beast, so to say. If you completely base your entire life on these things, then you miss out on what it simply is to be living. Mysticism is not living. While it's immensely relevant, and you could even say integral to the human experience, that does not make it an ultimatum. But, let's forget about all that. I did decide on a subject. Today's subject, as I'd like to take it, will be on mystical tools, magical implements, and items of interest. Not on specific ones necessarily, but at least on the concepts surrounding them. With all that being said, my name is River, and welcome to the Nimiton. I should begin such a discussion... Very frankly, there are basic ideas around magic, be it due to cultural norms or historical norms or just these expectations and ideas, very straightforward, simple things like the wands, the cauldrons, the pelts, the knives, you know, I say knives, you know, some people will say dagger, whatever you call it, incense, Oils, perfumes, structures, spacings, direction, all these different things ultimately fall under the categorization of mystical tools. And I find that there's a few ways to approach kind of this rigmarole, so to say, this ongoing specification of practice. And all of it falls down to, obviously, symbolism. Symbolism being pretty much the penultimate point in all magical practice. The tool is merely representative, but in many ways it brings in so many different discussions. I often see the chaos, the variety of other people, they discuss, let's say, making your own tool versus purchasing a tool. Well, if you make your own tool, people will say they imbue their energies with it, thereby in the process of constructing it is so much greater. Even the hermeticist will claim that the construction of his own tool is a sign of his adeptship and his advancement within the procedures of the magical orders that he is attaining. And then in another regard, someone will say that they will purchase the item because it, being based on a symbol, is representative of some development in that area. And they have no need to craft their own. And very unfortunately, and nearly ironically, I agree. I agree with both sentiments. And that to create your own item will, to certain individuals and people, just be better. And that it is more befitting of your own internal and personal nature to have your own items. 
In the same way, I could suspect that there is another individual who by no means associates themselves with their implementation and thereby does not need it, because these fall down into philosophy rather than they do into practice. And only through practice would the philosophy be debated or understood and then better developed for the particular individual, because there is ultimately no rule. It's not really fair to say uh, no rule, but... But I found that it is true, as some have put out, there, there are rules and there are no rules, all the same. And it becomes needless for us to debate these things too extensively. In fact, I believe that we would benefit greatly from simply viewing mysticism and magic as more organic and understandable as something that's as intricate as the human experience itself. Or even the human organism, which we do not fully know or have a grasp on. We spend time attempting to contemplate these things and simplify it into manageable compartments in our mind. But ultimately, these are very advanced subjects in the sense that their limit is far beyond the common scope. And we cannot claim to know them wholly and truly. So, I suppose what I'm attempting to say is that for the sake of this video, and to actually give some substance to this discussion, rather than just befuddle an individual with ideas, we must ultimately decide that we are discussing a specific thing, and that thing will be the tool itself. With all of these conundrums, and all of these considerations and confusions, it brings us down to, well, what is the tool? I gave a variety of simple examples earlier, some more common to other lineages than others, such as the cauldron not being common in various spaces aside from the modern witchy spheres. So we must ask, what is the tool? Well, obviously, you are the independent individual who has all these complexities built into them. That is the ultimate tool, the ultimate structure. And I do not simply say just the mind. To be purely mental is fine in your approach, but to say that simply it is the mind is one thing, that is a one man's idea, versus it being the whole spiritual nature, that is another idea, such as we could say the psychological and spirit model, or this external model, as the spirit model is often called. But these things in themselves are also limiting. There is surely, to nothing but a benefit of our own, a lack of limit, one that should be taken advantage of. And we must also ask ourselves, to what end do we actually go forward with these things? What qualifies as magic versus what doesn't qualify as magic? And I would say very little in both regards. While that can seem a little ridiculous, it is worth noting that mysticism and magical acts can be used in almost every space of our being, every day of life every aspect of what it is that we do and desire and want, which is, at the end of the day, the base of all occult practice, desire. Even the Zohar opens its lines with, when the king desired. And this is the nature of our being. Desire is the preliminary point of all workings. Therefore, we must ask ourselves, if desire is a thing that brings about the later act of magic, and we are the tool, well, is it the body? Is it the directionality? Is it all the conceptions? Is it the mental basis? Is it everything that we consider and wonder about? And ultimately, it is not. It is none of those things, and it is all of those things. And while this seems so ridiculous of a conception, it is our nature, and one that cannot be rejected. Therefore, if you want to be a great magician, if you really want to push your limit, because I know many of you are slacking, you have taken your time off, COVID is over, all these things have gone away, you have changed. But let's say all of a sudden you've been thinking about picking it back up. Maybe you want to approach these things more immediately and realistically, or maybe you see the lack of insight and introspection that you had in your early days. Well, now I say it's a good time to take advantage of that. As the world is developing in its absurdities, and things will become more compelling and more, I should say, intense, if you choose to pursue mysticism openly and ultimately, know that you are the tool. 
And there is a lack of restriction in what that means and what it will be. And with all that being said, my name is River. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you next time.